Hi everyone. So welcome to the another video. So today in this video, we are going to see about the tool called Pint. Okay. So the Pint tool is being used to test your API. It does it have any API security related issues. Okay. So here you can see this is a website. Uh, the Pint, the tool name is Pint. Okay. And is, uh, it is being developed very actively. And you have, I mean, they are working on a lot of things. Okay. So they are working on the new, new future to improve the tools. Okay. And here you can see this is a website for Pine. And here you can see the details why the Pine is being used. Okay. It is for API security testing that, that will find out any vulnerabilities throughout your development life cycle. Okay. So what kind of API security uh, security check they are doing, I will I will tell you later. Okay. So now uh, if you look at who can use the Pine. Okay. So Pine is for developer as well as the tester. Okay. And the AppSec app team also they can use. And the DevOps SecOps, DevOps, sorry, so DevSecOps team also can use, and CIOS also they can use. Okay. So what kind of actions and what kind of validation that the Pine tool does in the sense, like you can see here, all the related uh, security tests. Okay. So they have given one by one. You can see the test. So you will get the test results also. Okay. How many vulnerabilities find and how many tests we have executed? Everything it will come. Okay. It will do the check authorization and injection and authentication. Everything. Okay, so use the Pint inside your testing tool. So what options we have uh, to use the Pint tool, okay. So the Pint is get integrated with the Postman app, okay, where you can install your Postman application. So from Postman, you can run your Pint tool. From the new man, CLI also you can run, right. So we will run the, our collections from the command line, which is a new man with the help of new man tool, right. And you can uh, find in the CICD also for the GitHub actions. Okay, so these are the three ways where you can use your Pine tool to do the API security testing. Okay, and you can go for here like a YFT, API security is important and the design for the developer and testing everything. So this is their website, official website. You can go on, you can check it everything. Okay, and when you go to this docs, so this is a docs page. So here they have given all the details how to use the Pine tool. Pine, sorry. Okay, so the Pine is one of the three API security testing solution, which will give you the API security to the developers and testers. Okay. You can use along with the Postman app, CL, I mean, Newman CLI, as well as the GitHub Actions. Okay. So what are the security checks done by the Pine? Okay. So these are the checks. So by using this OSAP, so I'm just going to this uh, particular website. So this OSAP is a kind of like a standard for the API security. So here you can see the, they have a top 10 security check for all the, for the API. Okay, when it is come to API, they have top 10 security testing on the API. So any broken object level authorization, broken uh, user authentication, excessive data exposed, there are a list of 10 security API test can be run against all your API endpoints. Okay, so based on this, so they have developed the, the particular test, security test on your particular API endpoints. Okay. So when we, when we create a collections or when we check the API endpoints to the postman, it is kind of like a functional testing. We will check, okay, our API is up and running. We are getting the correct response or not. We do some validations, right? So that is our direct testing. So when it fund comes, I mean, find comes, you can see here the functional testing. When you send it to the find, find do the security test. Okay. So this is what the find group. Okay. So one, this is done. So now uh, what we have to do, so let's go to the, if you want to watch some videos also available and you have, if you, if you want to install the pine, I mean, install the pine, if you want to use the pine, there are some prerequisites. You have to do that. Okay. First thing you have to install the postman desktop application. Okay. You should not use any postman web or nothing. So you have to install the postman applications. So by going to this particular link, or you can go directly go to the Google and you can directly download the postman. Okay. So this is the first one. So the next one you can see here. So it does not support the Postman web. Okay. You should be installing the Postman application, which is desktop application. Okay. It will not work on the Postman web. Okay. Postman web also we can. Okay. So, and you have to download the Docker engine. Okay. So by going to this URL, you can download the Docker engine. So once you install the Docker, so this is how the Docker looks. Okay. Docker desktop. Okay. I'm just starting the Docker desktop. So after that, we can run our Postman. I mean, we can, we can run our collections uh, from the Postman. So before that, like uh, we have to do some couple of environment variable setup, then we can, we have to make sure our target is up. So target is nothing, the API endpoints and our Docker is also up. 
Okay. So next, the list of steps. Okay. So we have to port the pint collection from the postman. Okay. So here you can see the steps. So start the pint website. So here you can go to the pint website and you can click on the button called run postman. So here is the button. Okay. So the moment when you click on the button, so that will be redirect to this postman workspace. Okay. So here you can see they have created one workspace for the pint. So in that you have two workspace, I mean, two collections. Okay. So now if you go to this uh, particular document page, so for the pun collection to your workspace. Okay. So now we have to do the port that pine collection from the postman workspace. So after that, we have to do the start testing our things, our APIs. Okay. So let me go back to the postman. Yeah. Here. Okay. So now I'm going to port this particular pine collection. So just click on, make sure you have logged into the postman. Otherwise this port option will not be enabled. Okay. So just click on the port collection and give some name. So this is a kind of label. So I'm just going with the same label of the pine collection and I'm going to this workspace. Okay. So when you click on this, so if you have multiple workspace, any workspace, if you want to uh, port this collection, you can do that. Okay. So just click on the watch original collection because uh, the pine team is actively doing the development. Okay. If they do some changes, you will get notified through the postman. So you can easily uh, get to know what are the changes that made. So I'm doing the port collection. Yeah, you can see the collection is port. So now it will appear on my particular workspace. Okay, so the step is done. So now next thing. So if you wish to have the reference app to test, you can you can again you can get the board that is one of the collection from the pine team. You can use that. Otherwise, you can use your your own API collections also. Okay. So in this case, so, so let me go here and let me use my one of the collections. So this is my one of the collections. So this is how the pun collection will look. Okay. So here you can see there are a list of API endpoints they are using to validate the all the security tests you can see this is for object level authentication authorization broken user authentication so all the 10 api security checks what we have seen in this particular page okay so that are the check they are doing here so finally the run is finished so after run finished you can go for a report okay so now if we go to this fund collection so you can go here and you can check what are the variables that we have to define okay so now we can see run fund collection container Okay. So before that, make sure your, your uh, Docker is up. Okay. So now let me delete my existing one. Okay. So this is how your Docker will look once you install the Docker. So now the next step, what we have to do. So to run our container in the Docker. So what you have to do, if it is a windows or Mac, you can use this one or if it is a Linux, you have to use this command. So I'm just copying this command. You can change the port number if you want. Okay. So I'm going to open the terminal. Okay. Just copy paste the command and click on enter. So now the container will start working on your Docker. Okay. So now here you can see one container will be created for the pint. Yeah, so here you can see the pulling the latest uh, image from the Docker. So the container is started now. Okay, so when you do it in the first time, so you will not see this message. So you will be seeing like a kind of this message. Okay, the first time you have to pull the uh, recent image from the container, I mean Docker. So that will be created one container in the Docker. Okay, so now this is how the container will look. Okay, the status is running. Make sure the status is running. So now what we can do, we can go to the postman. In the postman, in the collection variable level, you can see some collections here. Okay. So that is what they have mentioned here. So now if you go to here, run find collection. So here you have to set the variables. So variables are very easy. You have to set your postman API key and the port number is by default 5001. That is what we are running in the Docker. Okay. So 5001 is the port number we are running in the Docker and your collection name, or you can use the collection UID, both are acceptable. And the scan ID, it will be automatically generated by the fine team. Okay, we don't want to do anything. So only thing we have to update API key and our postman collection UID or collection name. Okay, so how do we generate the API key for the postman? You can go to the settings tab.
So here you can go to the API keys. So in the API keys, you can just click on the generate key. So first time when you generate the key, so you will not see this API key related section. So you can go for a generate key. Okay. So go for generate key and you have to give some name, like I'm giving my key. Okay. And I'm generating the key now. Okay. The key is generated now. I'm going to copy this key and let me go to the postman. You have to paste it in the current value. Okay. And I'm planning to run one of the collection from my collections. So let me go to this collection. So just click on this collection. In the right side, either you can give the collection name or you can give the UI. Okay, the collection name is workflow. So if you have more than one of collection name in the same name, it's better go with the UI. Okay, so when you click on this I button, you can see the UID here. So just copy this UID and I'm going here and I'm pasting it here. Okay, that's all. So, so far what we have done, so we have just went to this particular collection of Punt Postman workspace. So we have poured that particular Punt workflow, sorry, collection. And we have come here and we have made a couple of changes on the variable. One is API key and one is your collection UID. That's it. So now what we can do, just save this one. Now we can go for a run collection. Okay, so that is what they have defined in the documentation also. Okay, once that is done, then you can go for a run collection. Okay, so now I'm going to run this. I'm running the collection, which is created by the fine team. Okay, so now the execution will start. So I can just click on the view results. So make sure your Postman desktop application, this is this will work only from the Postman application. You can see the very first endpoint is to check the Postman application running from the desktop, desktop application. And the second one is checking the Docker is up, okay, which is Docker container is up or not. Okay. So after that, it has started some, uh, I mean, it is, okay. It is throwing some error. So that's the reason it is not running. So let me do it again. I'm just clicking on the run button again. Yeah, you can see this time the test is started. You can see running automated security test. And you can see the percentage how much the security testing has scan has completed. You can see first time it is 55, second time is 61. So it will keep on run until the, uh, until it comes as a hundred percent. Once the security testing, all the, the 10 component of security testing is done, then you will get to the run finished API endpoint. Okay, so once your run is finished. Then we can go for the show report. So what kind of vulnerabilities have identified through by the fine team? Yeah, so now here you can see, I mean, all the tests are executed. You can see 100 percent scan is completed. So here you can see some condition, I mean, some, some security tests are failed. That is okay. So here you can see the last one is, which is run finish. Okay. So which means our collection is executed. Our, our API check is done on our collection. Okay. Now you can go to the show report API endpoint, which is given in the last of the fund collection. So here, just click on the send button to see the results. Okay, so so just click on the send button here, then just go to the visualize tab to see the, the well formatted one. Okay, so here you can see fund API security testing, so the result for the workflow collection. So this is a workflow collection which we have executed, right? So I just copied this workflow ID that is what is coming as a workflow collection and you can see the scan ID. Okay, this scan ID generated by the fine team. 
So now if you go to the collection variable, you can see the scan ID is updated. Okay. So now here you can see what are the endpoints that we have executed. So inside this, I have only one post method and the rest of things are get method. These are the only two API endpoints which I have used for my this collection. Okay. And here you can see all the, the API 10 uh, OSAP um, a list of 10 items, right? So this tests are executed and you can see there are some failures also and you can see the detailed findings. Okay, what went wrong? So what are the test cases are failed? What are the, uh, I mean, uh, categories of the particular API security test are failed? Okay, so this is how you will see the report. Okay, so this is how we will use the find tool to validate our API has any security vulnerabilities or not. Okay, so for this use case, we have find one security issues. You can see the rest, I mean, uh, the see what dynamic security results. So when you scroll down, you can see here, these are the security warning and you can see the detailed finding report. So here you can see the affected endpoints and other details as well. Okay, so this is how we will run our find collection to validate our API has any any uh, security related issues or vulnerabilities, okay? So what we have done, first thing, like I just go to here and just go to the run Postman collection, which will uh, redirect to the Postman fund, or I mean Postman uh, workspace. So from there, we have for this fund collection, find collection, and we have make sure that you have installed the Docker and make sure your container is up, okay? So you have to start the container. After container, then you can you have to update a couple of things in the Postman collection variable. So one is your API key. We have seen how to generate the API key. And you have to provide your collection name or your collection UID. Okay, the scan ID will be automatically generated once your collection is executed. Once your find collection is test is done. So that scan ID automatically will get updated. Okay. And you can go for the test show report and you can run this API endpoint to see what are the testers, I mean, what are the vulnerabilities or security issues were found for your API. Okay. So now there are a couple of other programs also going on. So if you go to this find website, so where you can see uh, if you find any issues on the security related thing, or if you find some difficulties, or if you feel like, the, I mean, some, some space for improvement or like a future enhancement, then you can go to this community tab and you can join their Slack community. And you can raise a question and you can you can report a bug, everything. Okay, you can share your new ideas to the to, to tool improvement, everything. And there are a couple of programs. I mean, one of the programs is going on, which is for the badges. Okay. So this is very limited. Uh, for example, you can see limited to the first 10 years, 100 users. Okay. So they are providing a couple of uh, badges to the users. One is API security early adopter and one is ambassador. Okay. So if you want to get the badges, uh, so for example, if you want to get the yearly badges, adopt, yearly adopter, then what you have to do, you have to set up the same thing. So by using the find, you have to run your postman collections. So once that is done, you have to send out to the email along with your scan ID. So scan ID is not, you can see here scan ID. Okay, The same scan ID will be updated in the collection variable also. You can see BA702, that is what we are seeing here as well. Okay, you have to send out to the email to the find team along with your scan ID. Okay, so they will be providing this patch, which is early adopted. And if you want to get the ambassador, so there are some rules you have to, I mean, you have to meet the conditions, like you have to onboard three friends or four work to the find early adopters, and you have to send out to the email. Okay, so these are the couple of patches that is they are currently providing. So you can, once you can export this tool and you can get to the, I mean, get these badges. Okay. So that's all about this video. Uh, it is completely free tool. You can you can do the security check uh, against your API, and it can be used by the developers and the tester and the, uh, the SecOps team and the Dev OpSec team. Everything. Okay. Now we have seen how to run our find collection from the Postman. So as well as you can use the Newman CLI wrapper, as well as you can use the GitHub Actions as well. So if you want to use the Newman uh, CLI wrapper, so just go to this link. So in the GitHub.com, the punt page find page, they have given the details how to run your collections through the name and CLI. Okay, so again, it's gonna be the same thing, like you have to, um, I mean, start the container and you have to follow these steps. So make sure you have installed the Docker container, then you have to use this particular command to run our Postman collection through the name and to find the API security against the endpoints for the find. Okay, so these are the things uh, when you use the new man. Okay, it is, it is available in the Postman as well as in the new man. Okay, 
and you can go to the GitHub Actions also. In the GitHub Actions also, you have to follow this instruction that is given by the Pine team. Okay, so here also you can see. So if you want to run your GitHub Actions, though, then you, you have to use this command in your, in your GitHub Actions workflow. So when you run this, so these are the three ways where you can use your Pine tool to, to find any API security related issues. Okay, you can directly use the Postman app and you can use the Postman CLI and you can use the GitHub Actions. Okay, so that's all about this video. Thank you guys.